How is it going, folks? Welcome back to Parts Prem. Today, we are in the January transfer window. Today, we have the Carabao Cup semi-final second leg. We're taking on Liverpool. Did not think I was going to be coming back at this moment in time, but having won the first leg 4-1... I was feeling rather confident. That was before we had injuries, suspensions, and players going away on international duty. For this game, Cadman's on the bench. He's doing well. And we might even see the live commentary debut of the 18-year-old centre-back sensation, Leon Pollard. Maybe centre-back sensation's a bit of a stretch, but he's good. As well as that, we are also going to be taking on Manchester United in the league and Aris in our final Europa League game. Lots to catch you up on, lots to talk about. Let's run the intro and get straight into things. Before we get too far into this video, have you ever seen this before? Our owner has announced he's retiring by the end of the season. I don't know if I've ever seen that before as an owner status, but yeah. I mean, shout out to Neil Swales. Uh, took over as a local businessman in 2026. Ten years later, he's had enough. Not entirely sure what that's going to mean for the future of the football club. I mean, a tycoon takeover would be nice, although at this point it is a little redundant. And that's, of course, because we've still got £86 million in the bank. I've still got a transfer budget of £46 million, but at the moment, with our current squad, don't really want to just spend money for the sake of it. You may well have already caught a glimpse of the league table. It's not looking very good. But what I would say is when you look at our form here, given the teams we've played, given it's been that horrible winter point in the season, I don't think it's been that bad. I, I, I really don't. Now, of course, last episode, we ended things with back-to-back -back wins over Blackburn and Lecce. Following on from that, wins have been hard to come by. The first result, a 1-1 draw against Southampton. Yeah, wasn't happy with this one. It was a pretty close game, this one. We didn't really put our best foot forward. Setford, our former man, did get a green rating. That's upsetting. Now, in the Southampton game, I did play the rotated team, and it was a bit of a gamble. It didn't play out on that occasion, but as we took on Manchester United in the Carabao Cup quarterfinal just a few days later, the gamble definitely did pay off. We were two goals up, uh, I think, by half-time, if I'm not mistaken. It was a really, really great start to the game. From there, happening for them, the Finnish sensation scored debatably the best goal I've seen all season against us. It flew into the top corner. Corner. JV then scored from a free kick to make it 4-1 and at the death we added a fourth yeah four uh, easy to lose count when there's so many goals but this goal here by Big Knot really nice finish past the keeper a really convincing result unfortunately our recent form hasn't quite been as convincing although given the teams we played maybe it's not that bad 1-1 against Chelsea Lemos getting on the score sheet 2-2 against Arsenal rotated the team a little bit for this one we came back from two goals behind to salvage the draw so a good result I suppose in retrospect after that we took on Manchester United again for the second time in a matter of weeks in this game Big Not got a hat trick. We win this one 3 2. I have got a little bit of a dilemma where between Lemos, Big Not, and Gaspar, I don't know who to start at striker. Often, at least at the moment, I am going with Big Not and I am going with Lemos alongside each other. Both players are either footed, and when you look at Big Not and his recent form, somewhat difficult to consider dropping him. He has been very, very good as of late. Unfortunately, that win against Manchester United is the last league win we have seen, and we've not won yet in January. We need to change that today. You can see we lost against Liverpool away from home 3-1. Not a surprising result. Not a result we're going to get too hung up on. The next result was disappointing. 2-2 against Wolves. We really should watch the highlights of this one. Now, I will say, you can see here, I did rotate the team for this game, and I kind of felt like I had to do it. Our players were absolutely exhausted. It's been a pretty crazy campaign to start the year. European football, cup running the Carabao Cup, all the league games. This game here, one where it just kind of caught up with us. Now, this was a game where it didn't really get going until the last 10 minutes, as far as we were concerned. Wolves still scored early on in this game. Of course, newly promoted Wolves, a team predicted to do quite well. They have some significant quality. It was on display. They scored, then we scored. 85th minute, made it 1-1, another highlight begins, and they scored within two minutes. Uh, Gutierrez with dogged defending, we'll go with dogged, he didn't win a tackle, so I'm not going to give him too much credit, but he tried, bless him. Good news though, Jaime capitalised on this by Rizzo. Uh, 
We're not going to question what the goalkeeper did. Hi, May. Great composure. Now, I did rotate the team for Wolves because we had the Carabao Cup semi-final. I didn't expect it to go like this. I ummed and I ahed about what games to do as the episode coming back. I thought, you know what? Game against Liverpool, very unlikely the game is going to be completely dead after the first leg. Might have been wrong on that. We won this one 4-1. Mad performance. Big knot with two. Lemos with two. Top quality display. XG of 3.77. A little reminiscent, you might remember, of that result we had against Liverpool a couple of seasons ago where we absolutely demolished them. We might be kicking ourselves, though, because they did score in the 86th minute to make it 4 one. Had we gone up 4-0, I would have felt a lot more confident. But with all the players we've got missing, a couple of injuries to key players, uh, and Lemos suspended, I am still a little nervous about this next game. Oh, and in the FA Cup, we lost to Sheffield United. Not, we're not talking about that result. Now, like I already said, the league really has been a mixed bag. When you look at the teams we've played, I don't think it's been terrible result-wise, but unfortunately, we are drawing far too many games. Nine draws in 21 games sees us down in 12th place right now. We have got games in hand on a couple of the teams in and around us, and truth be told, we're only six points away from Brentford in fourth, so we don't need to panic too much just yet. But having got a few difficult results, well, dud and dusted, I'm hoping we're going to be able to get our form well, upper level. Now in terms of the games we've got over the next two weeks, Liverpool we're going to do right now in the Carabao Cup. I'm going to go away, take on Sheffield United and take on Motherwell. Going to then do a bit of a quicker recap as we take on Manchester United for the third time in a month. And then after that, we will be doing an away day as we have our final Europa group stage game, taking on Aris, who are currently bottom of the Europa League, haven't won in seven and we really should be beating. 4-1 up going into this Liverpool game, though. It feels like it's just destined to be bottled. We're the home team for this second leg. We should be confident. Here is a team that I could play. Is this the team I'm going to play? The answer is yes. This is actually the full strength 11 for today, which... Uh, I mean, when you look at it like that, that is concerning. So unfortunately for us, Lemos is suspended. Rojas, Montero, Gutierrez all away on international duty. There is some South American under-23s tournament going on. Why it's scheduled for January, I don't know. I thought AFCON was the only thing that was going to be a pain in the butt, but apparently I'm wrong. Elsewhere, Manny Wilford can't play against his parent club, so Greg is back in the first team fray. Has actually been playing a few games here and there. I mean, when you look at the ratings as of late, he's not been amazing in them, but we're going to stick with Greg today. Tejera is currently suffering from a virus. He's out for the next week, which is less than ideal. And elsewhere, Big Knot and also Ryan Hunter, not 100% fit for this game. I could risk Ryan Hunter, but given the fact he's only available really to start 45 minutes, it doesn't feel worth the risk. We're four one up after the first leg. We should be fine, but this is football manager and this just feels like one of those situations where there's potential for the bottle, and I know how much you guys enjoy my pain and suffering, so here we are. Now, like I already mentioned in the intro, Pollard and Counterman on the bench for today's game. Significant occasions for both these players. Pollard, a player who's come through our youth intake, has developed absolutely crazily. We picked him up an episode or two ago. Um, been really, really happy with his development. I mean, you can see here how much he's improved and he's only 18 years old. So I want to give him game time. Elsewhere, Matthew Cadman, of course, a not insignificant signing for £16 million. He finds himself on the bench because I just I've just i sold someone and I've not mentioned it. It's the only bit of significant business that's happened in the whole month. We have sold Anthony Rich to Fenerbahce. Uh, £8 million sold for. Could go up by another million. If we do get that extra million, we will have made a profit on him. Uh, truth be told, he hadn't scored for us. I brought him in to be fifth choice striker. He wasn't happy being fifth choice. And Cadman, who I've just spent the last two minutes bigging up... I want to give Gabe time too. So yeah, moving on, Rich just felt sensible. I feel like that send off there for Rich is, I've done him dirty there really, haven't I? It's just a footnote in the episode. I'm sorry, Anthony, if you'd scored, I would have bigged you up more. This, by the way, is our third time playing Liverpool in five games. We've played them a lot lately. I'm sick of seeing them. Um, this is the last time we're potentially going to see them all season, if I'm not mistaken. So a good result here would be amazing. 4-1 up after the first leg. We've not gone to Wembley for a cup final yet. I know it's only the League Cup or the Carabao Cup. I I feel like there's, there's, there's a chance here. So let's try and make it happen. Silverware is silverware at the end of the day. And we would get a Europa Conference League spot guaranteed if we were to win the Carabao. Okay, Machete, by the way, playing right wing back. Rojas is away. Gutierrez is away. Hunter's injured. So yeah, uh, Machete, right wing back. Endrick up front. Hits the post. Goes wide. Remember to breathe, everyone. Some of you might have noticed it, by the way. Standing desk is active today. I really 
really want to say I feel confident about this result, but I feel like expressiveness might be needed, especially if Gaspar's going to miss an open goal. Alunga, Machete, he could be the hero. He's not the hero. Um... <laughs> Yeah, standing desk is active. I feel like today's a day where if we bottle this, I need to be ready to walk around and reflect on life. And also, it's quite nice just being able to jump around. I can celebrate when Jaime scores a free kick. Not this time. Machete's picked up a knock. I, if he is injured, I might not have a right back for the next game. And it's not down to lack of right backs. I've got four of them, but none of them are fit at the moment. I'll be honest, came back for this game expecting drama. Hasn't really happened so far, but Greg does have a 7.0 rating. So Greg, uh, so it's gone down to 6.9. He did have a 7.0 rating. We've just come back to watch Greg. We're only here for Greg. I mean, if we get in at the break at, what, 4-1 on aggregate, you'd feel like job's done. But this is Liverpool with Endrick up front, and this is me playing football manager. I mean, this is anyone playing football manager. Bottles are, well, possible. But Diallo could score here. One-on-one, -on -one, he's hit the post again. He missed the chance just like that last episode. He can't hit a barn door with a machine gun, that boy, at the moment. Oh, my word. I can't believe it. It was such a good chance to end the half. We've done beautifully. We have done beautifully at Diallo, mate. I know you've only got 15 finishing. you really got to stop hitting the woodwork sooner rather than later. You don't get double points for it, son. Warunga's on a booking. I really want to take him off for Leon Pollard. Is, is, the, is this a, an ill-informed idea? Is this just me being a football manager romantic? You know, I feel like there's a chance here with Warunga on a booking to bring in Pollard at 18 years old. Come through our youth intake. I believe he'd be the first person ever to play in our first team that we actually got through an intake of our own. And he could do it in a cup semi-final. If we get a goal there, maybe I'll do it. Adu Jamfi, Diallo. Diallo, he's, he's just rubbish, isn't he? He's just, he is the new Anthony Rich. Except Diallo did score on his debut. Right, Machete injury. I can bring on Ryan Hunter, who I was told could play half the game. Uh, we're going to shuffle things around a little bit here. Volashak is left-footed, so he will go to left centre-back. Fallentine is then going to come into the middle. And then to the right... Oh, round of applause, everyone. He's one of our own. Leon Pollard, free cap for the England under-21s. Came through four years ago, has developed crazily. Was he born in Guernsey? Was he born... He was born in Guernsey. They, oh, they say romance in football is dead, everyone. Every time Leon touches the ball, I want us all to say, way or something like that. Diallo, fallen team, Pollard's at the edge of the box. We should click on him. I want, I want to click on him so we've got a name above his head and we can just follow him for the rest of the game. Now, granted, he is coming on to play right centre-back, so I'm not sure what I'm expecting him to achieve, but let's dare to dream. I am a little bit wary that I've got a game in three days' time and then I've also got Motherwell in the Europa League and we've got a few players missing at the moment. My team is going to be exhausted by the time we take on Manchester United and Aris. I'll be honest, not exactly been a classic, but let's try and make it a classic. Big Knot, Cadman, on you come. Two young English forwards. Elsewhere in the team, we're going to bring in JV at centre attack in mid. Can they make something happen? I mean, it's 4-1. This is a perfectly acceptable result. We would be going to Wembley if it stays like this. JV, free kick from range. Loops it towards Big Knot. It's head away, headed away to Endrick. Is it bad that with 10 minutes left, I'm still sat here thinking Liverpool could still easily score free? Like, they've got a team full of so much quality that it is entirely possible. We have to have our wits about us. We have probably been the better team, but Football Manager doesn't care if you've been the better team. Lucas Reyes scores. It's 4-2. You'll never guess who got the assist for them, by the way. Was it against Pollard? It wasn't. Pollard... He could have done better there. I have put him up against Endrick for his debut. Ba baptism by fire. He'll be fine, hopefully. Why is there another highlight? There's five minutes left. Pollard's on the ball. Way! Or something, I don't know. Cheer. Hunter. Also a sub. Ball doesn't find its way to him. Nuri inside to Alvarez. I mean, if Liverpool get another back here, do I panic? Do I do I start to pat? Oh, my word. Fallen team, you beautiful, beautiful Danish man. Oh, what a specimen. He's cleared it off the line. All right, you know what? Let's just get rid of look for overlap, get rid of pass into space. Let's just lower the tempo, slow everything down, and just chill, breathe. We don't need to overcomplicate things here. I want to go to Wembley. I mean, Liverpool have beaten us again for the second time in five matches, but don't let that distract you from the fact we won 4-1. Diallo was apparently our best performer. I spent the entire game hammering him. He's got man of the match for us. That's not how it works. Man of the match, I assume was Endrick. It, it was probably Endrick.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are into the Carabao Cup final, a competition that Newcastle United have won three times in the last six years. I don't actually know who we're playing. Who are we playing? Carabao Cup. We're taking on Newcastle. They've won it three out of the last six years. That's not going to be a fun game. Is that game in our schedule? When are we going to be playing it? It's going to be on the 2nd of March. Book that in your diary. Get the weekend booked off work. We're heading there for a Sunday where we have a chance of guaranteeing ourselves European football. And then it won't even matter if we just completely flunk the league for the rest of the year. Player of the match, by the way, was actually Diallo. Uh, he had an expected assists of 1.26. Also, goalless Diallo worries us. He doesn't worry me. He got man of the match. There is, noth there is nothing to worry about. Okay, I will be honest. I am slightly worried. Uh, he's got one goal in 14. But we did only sign him for 6 million, and he's valued at 36 to 41. And he's only 20. Let's not get on his case too much too soon. Now, like I already mentioned, we are also going to do the Manchester United and Aris games today. The Man U game is in 11 days' time. I'm not going to do the away day for that because we are going to do an away day for Aris. We're going to do a shorter game against Manchester United, given the fact it's in the league, given the fact that I don't really know what to expect. And also, it's Manchester United. There will definitely be opportunities in the coming seasons as we try and slug it out for a Premier League title win where we go to Old Trafford and do the away day. Who knows, maybe the Glazers will have improved the stadium by the time I actually go visit. Anyway, that game is a few days away. Two games in the intermission. Sheffield United, who we've already lost to recently, and Motherwell, who I'd like to think we can win. Going to rotate the team, hope that we don't get too many more injuries, and maybe when I return, I will actually have some more players available. Because at the moment, we are missing a few important ones. Two games played. Uh, we, we lost to Sheffield United in the league. I don't like Sheffield United. I'm now looking at our past record against them. They really are a bogey team. In eight meetings, we've beaten them twice. That is awful, isn't it? That defeat in the league hurts. What is a little bit of good news, I guess, is we did beat Motherwell in the Europa League. And with that result, we have secured ourselves a spot in the second of the knockout rounds. Just as a reminder, top eight teams go in at a later round. I think it's something like from ninth down to 28th. I've just pulled out some numbers there. But a load of teams go into a knockout round. We have a couple of weeks off. So that's good, I guess. This is just your daily reminder. I hate the new European Cup format. It is awful. Anyway, with that all said and done, Manchester United here is a game that I would really like to win. We're taking on Wayne Rooney's side at Old Trafford. We're currently in 12th, and it really doesn't look that good. Eight points away from Chelsea in 7th. We do have two games in hand over them, but given the fact that as of late, we've been unable to beat Sheffield United, Wolves, and Southampton, it's not just down to difficult games here. We've just not been playing very well. I say that, we are still missing a load of first-team players, including Lemos, who's now away on international duty with Uruguay. I know what you're thinking. Where are all your players? And you know what? I was wondering the exact same thing. What could be so important that my players have all buggered off? I'll tell you what's so important. Um, the Olympic Games qualifying. That's right. My Premier League season has been derailed, so Uruguay can go play at the Olympics. I'm not happy. Some good news. Tejera is back in the starting 11 today. Elsewhere, Rojas is back from Argentina's uh, national team. So we've got one of our players back. But to be honest, it's a good team. It could be a little bit better. You know what? Gaspar, in you come. Uh, Diallo, it's nothing personal. You've just been rubbish lately. Okay, this is the team we're going to go with. We have still got one more game after this one. So uh, let's not dilly-dally. Let's try and get an unlikely result. Also, I've selected two subs outside the match squad. What do you mean? Oh, it turns out I actually have Greg and Ryan Hunter. Yeah, that's fine. They can go. We have beaten Manchester United two times over the last month or two. Uh, given the fact that we can't beat anyone else, maybe this is the most winnable game of the lot, and it might just be about to get a lot more winnable because Happenen, who I bigged up earlier on in this episode for scoring that crazy goal, the Finn has been sent off after eight minutes. If you're wondering how good Etu Hatbonen is, uh, this is how good he is, 27 years old. Uh, he is the star of the Finnish national team. He's rather good. Okay, they're down a man. We are the away side. But surely this is our game to go out there and win. Now, surely this is a game that we can make something happen in. Manchester United trying to play the ball out from the back. Somewhat brave considering they're down a man. But, I mean, we've still got to be wary. They've got quality. They've got ability. And 
We've not got form on our side as of late. But if there's a game to maybe get something in, this feels like a real golden chance now. Roberto for them on the near side. The number two, the fullback. Can he get to the byline and cross it in? He can. Tejera kind of half clears it away. Doherty pulls the trigger from range. He hits the woodwork. McKillop gets away from danger. But oh my word, it was not enjoyable watching them bring the ball forward there. And well, I thought for a second the highlight was going to end, but Jamfi's still got it. He's battling away. He's giving it to Alunga and Bazunu pulls out a ridiculous save. Manchester United are playing this very narrow system now with wing backs, but given the fact they've not got any wide midfielders, I'm just going to tell Jamfi and Rojas to go and play as complete fullbacks. Go forward more. Let's use those wide areas as well, actually. Let's play that little bit wider, focus the play down the wings. Let's exploit the fact they're going to be a little lighter in those areas to maybe create stuff. Manchester United looking to bring the ball away here. Ribera, Roberto, Rodrigo. They've got lots of players beginning with the letter R here. And while well, Ribera, who started the move, is going to keep that ball in play. Pulls it back to Roberto. Ball inside. Jaime puts in a tackle. The ref's going to the screen. Not like this. Not like this. Don't give it. Do not give it, ref. Don't hurt me. Please, football manager. I'm be Look, even in game, I'm going to have a word with the ref. I'm actually squaring off with their manager. Me and Wayne Rooney on the sideline about to go fisty cuffs. <sighs> They've got a penalty. Right. Manny Wilford. You've been out of the team lately. Greg's been rocking it out. You've been injured. Can you come back with a bang? I'll tell you what. I don't know if that's a bang necessarily. He saved the penalty. It was one of the worst penalties I've ever seen. Ten minutes left of the half. I'll tell you what would be sweet now. If we could go up the other end and score. Warunga with the ball. Lays it wide to Jamfi. Can he beat his man? Can he get to the byline? He whips it in from deep. Big knot was under it. Didn't jump. Didn't compete. That said, McKillop's going to be there to mop up the pieces. And we go again now. Jamfi, the number three. The Ghanaian whips it in. Alunga volleys it. VAR is going to check this. It was a great little finish. It was a great little ball into the box. I'm now just going to hope and pray this counts. This game might well have just turned on its head in a matter of 10 minutes. A missed penalty at one end. And now... This goal is going to be confirmed. Jamfi pulling the cross in from well, way sooner than I expected. Pulled it behind the defender. Alunga, tidy little finish from the centre attacking mid. Gives us the lead here. That said, not going to be the last bit of action to end this half because Manchester United could be on the attack here. Chapman bringing the ball forward. Players queuing up in the middle. Gives it back to Uga, who's maybe going to get this cross in from the byline. Pulls it back for Bearer. Manny Wilford tips it onto the woodwork. It's not away from danger just yet. Let's not give away another penalty. McKillop gets it away. Gaspar competes for the header. Jamfi just win the ball, slow down the play. That will do. Two minutes left of this half. Manchester United, considering they're a man down, they've been very content going forward, very content attacking. It might leave them open on the counter, though, as Jamfi lays it back to Runga here. Going to go back to Manny Wilford. He is going to look to launch it long. And I'll tell you what, Gaspar, well, he was under it for a moment. Unfortunately, Manchester United dealing with that ball with relative ease. Roberto, number two, won by Jaime this time. This time he's not giving away a foul, not giving away a penalty. And now Tejera with it. Jaime, Alunga. Lovely build-up play here. Jamfi. Players on ahead. One is Gaspar. Big Knot's in the middle. Big Knot is there to tuck it away. It's going to be another VAR check. If this is a second goal, it's massive. If it's going to be disallowed, I will be sad. Because I don't think he needed to be offside here. The ref's going to put his hand to his ear. And the goal's going to stand. It's going to count. It was a lovely worked goal. This ball here by Jamfi to Gaspar. Mwah, beautiful. And Big Knot's finish. Uh, it was good enough. It wasn't that good of a finish, was it? He, I mean, he had half the goal to aim at. So at half time here, maybe a tad fortunate to be 2-0 up. Manchester United have had a sending off. They had that penalty, which is where a lot of their XGs come from. Besides that, I think we have been the better team, he says, with the least convincing kind of talking ever. Uh, look, I need more conviction in my voice. We deserve to win that first half. We deserve to win this game. And I'll tell you what, kickoff highlight, that would set us on our merry way. Rojas trying to pick out Big Knot. And uh, well, he has five crossing. He has nine passing. We've seen all nine passing on display there from Rojas, who has actually got a few assists to his defense from right wing back. Rojas, do something for us now. Jaime, Rojas, Gaspar finishes it. This is another VIR check. We've had so many tight offsides in this game. Is Rojas about to add another assist to his season? VAR's going to check it. The answer's no. Was it offside? Hmm, by about five yards. 
Jamfi with a throw in at the halfway line here. Big Knot's available down the line. I'll tell you what, I've seen the pass. He's seen the pass. Big Knot, options in the middle, Gaspar. Bit of a loose touch, cleared away by Manchester United. Of course, still only 2-0 here. Still a chance, you'd have to say, given what we saw from Manchester United. They could fight their way back into this game. They missed a penalty. They hit the woodwork twice. We've ridden our luck in this second half. It's got to be about getting that third goal. That is a point at which I would feel comfortable. So we approach the hour mark, probably should be looking to make maybe a few more changes here, rotate things around. Although knowing that we're through in the Europa League, I know that I can play the B team and not worry about the result. There could be a chance here. McKillop tries to pull it back, it's deflected. Bazunu had to make sure that wasn't going in his goal. Has still got a corner here, Jaime over it, Tejera towards the near post. Ball's going to be hit in his direction, it's a glancing header. And I'll tell you what, Bazunu's made another stop. If I'm not mistaken, Bazunu is a youngster for Man City. It's a bit cursed that in this universe he is now the goalkeeper for Manchester United. At the moment in this game, he is very much keeping the minute. Whilst the woodwork has been our MVP, just completely ignoring the fact that Manny Wilford saved a penalty, uh, their goalkeeper, Bazunu, he's been very good today. And in-game, he's, ra I mean, he's rather good, isn't he, a football manager? He's got 133 caps. That's a lot of caps. Half an hour left. Let's make some changes. Gaspar's going to come off, I think, for Diallo here. Elsewhere, Jaime, we're going to take off. I'm going to bring in Machete. Rojas, maybe a little bit tired. Fulentin, go to right wing back. We are going to bring in Pollard for more game time. Is this driven by my selfish desire to see Leon improve as much as possible? Potentially. Far fewer highlights in this second half. The game was a lively one, but in this half, we have had certainly the better of the play. A third goal would be the misery compiler. Could we deliver it here? We probably should have. Tejera's headed it wide. Manchester United bravely trying to play it out from the back. I say bravely. Maybe it's stupid or maybe it's genius because they have broken the initial press. And now there's a little bit of space for Kehelme to get into. Lays it back to Wood. Now with Williams. He's going to play it forward. Tejera reads it well. Pollard. Fulentin sliding in at right wing back today. He's going to dink it forward. Wasn't the, the best of balls forward. And now... Well, Manchester United able to recycle possession and build from the back again. Bazunu. To Williams Jr. Allen looking for Wood, the right wing back on the overlap. Manchester United with a few players in the box. If they were to get one back now, you start to panic. Wilford, what a save that is. Ten minutes left here. Manchester United have got to start going for this game. And, well, perhaps they are already going for it. Manny Wilford on an 8.0 rating. Of course, bolstered by the fact he saved a penalty. On for a clean sheet as well as things stand. And I'm, well, I was about to say, I'm content to see this game fizzle out into nothing. It might not fizzle out into nothing just yet because there is a highlight here. And it's a Lunga threading in Big Knot in behind. He had a great hat-trick against Manchester United last month. Had a chance to score there. Squandered it. Full-time in this game. Didn't see anything from Pollard, but he got a 7.1 rating, so I suppose he did fine. Manny Wilford, 8.5 rating. That penalty save really did turn the tide of that game. In the second half, there was plenty of chances for us. Not many highlights by comparison, but ultimately, it's a rare league win. I need a few more of these. With that result, we climb up to 10th place. We are now only one point behind Manchester United, who we have a game in hand over. As the teams more immediately above us, I'm eyeing up Tottenham, who would only be five points ahead of us if we win our game in hand. That might be a little bit of a big if. By the way, if you're looking at the league table, thinking Brentford are up in fifth year. Brentford are a weird team this universe. Media prediction of 12th. Last year, they finished 16th. They actually had a tycoon takeover happen seven years ago. Since the Tycoon takeover happened, they've done nothing in any season. In fact, they've not even finished in the top half of the Premier League. But this year, out of absolutely nowhere, they're the new Aston Villa. They're up in fifth. Anyway, we have still got one more game to do, and it is an away day. We are heading to Aris. I have no idea where Aris is. Is Aris a plate? I, I have no clue. It's in Greece somewhere. We're going to Google Maps. Let's go find it, shall we? Okay, folks, game number three today, taking on Aris in the Europa League. Worth noting, everything is yellow and black. That is because it's deadline day. Nothing too crazy going on here, but I very nearly sold Greg. Leicester bid £30 million for him, which I couldn't not take. Unfortunately, Greg didn't want to go and play for Leicester in the championship, which is somewhat understanding. But given the fact we bought him for £2.6 million, had I sold him for £30 million, that would have been quite nice. Right now, nothing going on transfer-wise, in or out, which with only three hours left of the window probably means we're all done in transfer stuff. But a little bit of transfer business has happened over this winter period. Christopher Watson, one of two youngsters who left the club, we sold him for £550,000. Michael Keenan also left the club for £550,000. Two 
Decent young players with a little bit of potential, but potential I don't think they're going to fulfill. The only big sell of note and, uh, well, light a candle, bow your head, moment of silence, Adam has left the building. He was not happy about being a super backup player for us, yet to make an appearance this year. We've sold him for £250,000. Played 120 games for us. Very, very important part of our team back in the championship days. But truth be told, he's just not very good anymore. And I can't give him the first team football that he wants. Anyway, now that you're all caught up, it's time to do an away day. We are heading to take on Aris. Oh, I hope it's a good one. So I do believe as the crow flies, this might be the furthest away day we've done of the series so far. We are taking on Aris FC, and I will hold up my hands and admit it, I have already looked at Google at where the team play. I figured it probably wouldn't be the most entertaining video if it was just me for 20 minutes looking around every football stadium in every city in Greece. As for where they play, it's in a place called Thessaloniki. Definitely said that correctly. And the stadium itself, I believe, I hope, is this stadium here. Um, it doesn't show a green patch on Google. It's a strong start. But yes, here we are in the northeast of Greece. And I have to say, this is a stadium really nestled, isn't it? In the middle of a suburban area. I didn't realise that the layout of Greek cities was so grid-like. Is that a normal thing in Greece? Greece viewers, let me know. Or should I say Greek viewers or Greece based viewers. I swear English is my first language. I'll be honest, from above, uh, it's not the most overwhelmingly exciting stadium to look at. Uh, there's no car park. There is a playground, though. I mean, I have no idea. What street view does Greece have? We might be in luck. Okay, firstly, let's look at it from the outside. That's the stadium. That, it doesn't look like the stadium. I thought this was just a random apartment building and I was facing the wrong way. No, this is the football stadium here. It might be the least looking football stadium, football stadium ever. Uh, how would you even get in? Okay, from this side, it does look a little bit more like a football stadium. Plenty of flags above. Uh, I guess they have their club shop or something. I'll be honest. Uh, I wish I could tell you what this all says. I don't know the Greek alphabet. I know, I know. That's a shocking confession. I'm sorry to disappoint. Now, it does appear, unfortunately, when it comes to the stadium, there's no footage from the stands, but... For whatever reason, the Street View van just drew what looks like a slightly phallic shape on the pitch. Okay, here is Aris's stadium. I'll tell you what, this looks way more impressive, doesn't it, than the satellite view. Let's be honest, is that the most satisfying pattern of seats you've ever seen? The checkered black and yellow. It's up there for me. Let's go look at the dugout. Thoughts on the dugout. Have they got enough seats for European games? Maybe. Got the fourth officials dug out, all four seats for all the, the referees. Do the, do the referees not have a changing room anywhere? And then we have the home dug out with some bonus seats. I guess this is for players who are warming up or getting ready to warm up. Uh, looks very cosy, almost looks like a bus stop. I'm not familiar with Aris at all, but in 2011, apparently they were playing in the Europa League. I've not heard of Aris. If you were to tell me, Jack, name Greek football teams and hold a gun to my head, wouldn't have been a name that came to my head. Uh, please don't hold a gun to my head either. I mean, the stadium itself, it's not the most flashy, it's not the most exciting, but between the patterns on the seats and just the kind of quite unique layout to it all, like, why do the seats slope up in the corners? This is, it's, it's, it's a weird shape, but I think I like it. I will say, not a lot going on outside the ground. Uh, no car parking. Should I award away days higher scores because we don't see stuff like it in England? I, I, I don't know. I really should have fleshed out the scoring system before I started the whole Jack does an away day thing. Right, the clean this... Vikelidis Stadium. I've definitely said that incorrectly. Um, what am I going to give you? Wait, there's a swimming scent. There's a swimming scent. Hold the phone. Excuse me, I'm here for the swimming pool. If there is a swimming pool here, I'm I'm not seeing it. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Okay, Aris FC. Different stadium, unique stadium. I mean, you've got all this cool stuff laid out around the club. Apparently there's a chess area, kickboxing, but I can't see any of it. So with that in mind, based on what I can see... Five and a half out of ten. Might be being lenient there. I think the European away days, they they, they instantly get an extra point or two extra just because it's not England. So for this game today, I am going to make it a bit briefer. We should be hammering Aris here. This is the team we're going with. Rotated 11. Still a handful of players away on international duty and stuff. Um... Yeah, annoying, but we should be able to get the job done here, I'd like to think. Of course, given the fact that we were able to beat Motherwell 3 now we are already secured a spot in the next round. We're currently third in a group of 36, which sounds impressive. Um, I do think, having now looked at strength of schedule, we probably did have an easier run of games. So, 
whether or not we can read too much into it, but it does make me want to believe that we could go far in the Europa League this year as we advance into the knockout stages. What would be really convincing is to win this game here and watch Diallo score without hitting the post. Okay, we've taken the lead 15 minutes into this game. Big knot with it. Nice move through the middle. Very, very simple, ultimately. Aris here gave away the ball. Hunter read the ball superbly and got it forward into a dangerous area. Diallo inside to JV. He threaded through Big Knot, who scored. It's another assist for JV. It's another goal for Big Knot. Those two players, they've been getting those numbers rather high in this competition. 10 minutes left of this half. It's still only 1-0. It's been a really, really dominant display. What I'd love to see is a second goal before half time. Could we get it here? Volashak to Machete, giving it inside to Hag. Now with Rurunga, back with Hag, of course, our back three for this game, all under the age of 20, a load of kids running riot here in Greece, and while Diallo, I think might have just scored, miracles might happen, wait, hold the phone, which we're, we're checking VAR, don't sell it, I've celebrated too soon here, haven't I, please count, please give Diallo a goal football manager. I can't believe it. Half time in this game, only 1-0, it's been one way traffic, they've had one shot all half, if we play like that in the second half, we will win this game. This is a game that feels like it's more a case of when will we get a next goal rather than if we'll get a next goal. I can't believe this game is still only 1-0. I have made a couple of changes. Pollard's on, Alunga's on, Gaspar's on. Would love to score a second just to calm my nerves completely. There's three minutes left here. This should be game, set and match. Aris, they've done very little. They've had one shot on target all game. Uh, Greg in goal has done absolutely nothing. And ultimately... It's it's not a classic, but it's a win. That really was an awful game. This result really wasn't going to change a great deal. Both Bordeaux and Manchester United win their final games to ensure 100% records for them. As for ourselves, seven wins, one draw, third place, spot in the knockout round. Happy days. And Monaco have just made a bid for Greg. I've just I've accepted a £30 million bid from Leicester, and they're wanting to offer £9 million. Now Greg's unhappy. What a low point to end this episode on. So with that result there, we are going to navigate, I believe, straight into the round of 16. Four games away from the Europa League final, which is definitely something I'd love to target this year. Alongside, of course, the Carabao Cup, which is looming a little over a month away. I was going to try and end today's episode on an even brighter note, but I mean, after last year's youth intake, what I was told was excellent and that was rubbish. I don't know if I can even trust this. Apparently, we might have a good winger. We don't play with wingers. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's triple header. Next time out, we are going to be back probably for the Carabao Cup, maybe for some Europa League. I don't, I don't know how the games are going to lie. I'm focusing on cup competitions this year. Top half in the Premier League and I'll be happy. Just a little reminder as well, next week Park to Prem is back to your regular scheduled viewing five episodes a week. So be here or be sphere. I'll see you next time. It's me, Jack, and uh, I'm out. That was an awful outro. I'm not redoing it. That It'll do. It'll do.